Hello and welcome to the video lecture series brought to you by St. Andrews Institute of Technology and Management. My name is Ravinder. I am an assistant professor with ETCE department and we are discussing the subject called Object Technologies and Programming with Java. Okay, so we are studying the paradigms of the OOPS or the you can say OOPS paradigm for quite a while now and today we are going to see a very popular type of looping system uh, in Java that is called for loop and perhaps the most used uh, looping system in any of the languages that you you might be familiar with okay so for loop is the is the building block not the building block but but the basis of your looping system because it's it's versatile it's more effective than while loop it's more protected than while loop uh, in terms of reminding the code or a programmer that what has to be done to terminate the loop successfully or stop it from uh, diving into an infinite loop okay so let me start it by giving the, the basic providing with the basic syntax of uh, this for loop so this is how your for loop looks like now for loop is basically started with the keyword called for okay please follow the cursor for loop basically starts with the keyword called for and after that there will be brackets which will have some arguments we'll talk about them in a while and after that in between the curly braces following up the brackets we will have the body of the loop or you can say block of statements which must be executed when the loop is uh, in a pass okay in a pass means it is uh, loop is going through its uh, cycles or iterations as you call it in your uh, computer domain okay so when the loop is in valid iteration then the statements that must be executed or these are the statements basically which you want to uh, execute again and again and again for stipulated amount of or the stipulated times of iterations or the stipulated number of iterations okay so what makes for loop uh, different than your while loop so first of all inside the for loop you will have a variable which will keep things in order or if i can rephrase that uh, that particular uh, let's say so variable will keep the check that on in which iteration you are presently in now this particular initialization uh, the variable that is going to be initialized uh, inside this argument brackets is has a scope only for this for loop has a scope only for the for loop uh, your compiler or your runtime will not identify it outside the for loop okay first of first thing first so you you are going to initialize a variable for the for loop for loop and that particular variable is going to be the variable which will keep in check that how many times your for loop is going to run okay after the initialization of your variable by initialization i means the declaration that is the type and the initial value okay after that uh, let's see uh, first let me again uh, come back to this this particular bracket and not start with these conditions uh, this in this argument brackets we will have three statements i am saying that again we will have three statements not arguments we will have three statements and these statements are uh, separated by each other with the help of this semicolon please keep that thing in mind there will be no comma here there will be semicolons because these three are statements not arguments okay so these and uh, you know inside the java we end up a particular statement by uh, imposing uh, uh, semicolon at the end okay so uh, each of these statements will be separated by each other by use of semicolon in the end statement you don't have to put any semicolon okay there will be three statements first will be uh, initialization of the variable we have already discussed second is the condition on that particular variable which you have initialized in the earlier statement now this condition will decide whether you will go inside the loop or not okay so this is 
this condition is like the conditional statement we have studied in the if else and in the while loop okay in the if else and in the while loop so i think you have got the point what i am trying to say as we have uh, i have al uh, already mentioned here now if let's say we are making a pass in this uh, for loop and as you know while looping after the end of the statement your control will again go for checking the condition now if this condition turns out to be false let me again rephrase that that this condition is going to be a boolean statement okay so as you know that boolean statements only results in either true or false so uh, if this condition came out to be false in that case please follow the cursor you will not go inside the loop or the run time will not go inside the loop it will switch to or the control will switch to the next statement outside of the loop so the block of these statements will not be executed and if this comes out to be true this condition comes out to be true in that case the control will switch to the this particular uh, block of statements that is will we are going to be inside the for loop that is what it is called we are going to be inside the for loop okay now the third statement is updation now let me tell you this condition will be imposed on the variable that we have initialized here okay now uh, next is updation as you know we have seen in the while loop the condition of infinite loop okay so infinite loop is when your condition doesn't change its status while executing or while featuring in your while loop the same is condition here that if this condition suppose if this condition is never going to be false in that case your loop is never going to be terminated so the control will loop around or will uh, make iterations forever it will pass around this for loop forever and these statements will be executed again and again and again and again until you stop your application and this application or this particular for loop is uh, going to be an infinite loop <coughs> sorry so i think you have got the idea what i am trying to say now so uh in that case we have to make sure that our particular loop must end or must terminate after few iterations or after the stipulated number of iterations that we have wanted now that could only be possible when we update our variable according to our needs which is initialized in the first statement because the condition is also imposed on that particular variable okay so a variable is initialized we have put a condition there okay and every time we make a pass in in the for loop the condition is checked if the condition is true we'll go inside the for loop if condition is false control will switch to the outside of the loop and every time when the whole body of the loop is executed after that the last statement before this closing of the curly braces will be this updation let me tell you this particular uh, statement here that is updation doesn't execute does not execute before entering the loop it will be executed after you have completed all the statements inside this body of the loop or the block of statements okay so the last statement that is going to be executed will be updation so let us take an example say you have initialized a variable let's say i and its initial value is okay sorry for the interruption uh, let me again uh, rephrase that uh, that let's say you have initialized a variable called i and its initial value is equal to 0 okay so that completes your initialization statement next is your condition the condition is such that uh, the loop is valid until the value of i is less than 10 so what what would be the condition here the condition would be i is less than 10 and the updation is that every time for loop makes a pass the value of i will be updated by 1 by plus 1 so there will be i plus plus okay so this for loop will go on until the value of i becomes equal to 10 at that case this condition will become false and the loop will be terminated and control will switch to the next statement outside the loop 
so i think i think you have got the idea what i am trying to say here okay so this is how it works now we are going to see a live example of the for loop uh, let me brought to uh, brought you to the, or let you to the ide so let's say we want to print a particular statement 10 times okay so in that case we uh, will write let's say initialize oh sorry we will initialize a variable called a equal to not even even uh, that's the beauty of the for loop if you want to implement a for loop you need not to initialize a particular variable let's say every time uh, a particular variable which will your uh, the keep track of your for loop outside of the for loop so you need not to have a state So what I am trying to do is, what I'll do here, I'll try to uh, print out the table uh, which you have uh, seen in your mathematics, the table of two, three, four, five, six. Let's try to have a table of let's say five this time. So what I'll do is, I will uh, keep make this five. Okay, uh, let's start a for loop. I'll try to print the table of five. So I have first. Will be the initialization. So I will initialize variable. Let's say int i is equal to one. Uh, okay. Now you want your table to be exactly printed out ten times as you have read in your uh, primary school mathematics books. So i must be less than eleven. Okay. So this is your conditional statement. Now the last one is going to be your updation. as you know you have written your mathematics in your primary uh, tables in your mathematics in primary school as 5 ones are 5 5 twos are 10 so every time you go through the next statement uh, one of the variables updates by one so in this case your i will be updated by one well, that will make sure that your loop actually runs for exactly 10 times okay now we have to write uh let's say let's say i have initialized a variable also called sum so sum is equal to 0 not 0 but 1 okay so let us write try to write it let's dot print ln and i will write here uh let's say 5 multiplied by i now this this plus is actually concatenation concatenation of the strings when you try to add two strings is called concatenation okay i will discuss that when we will get to the, the strings part don't worry about that and i will also make you understand what is actually happening here in this particular line so don't worry about that and let's say equal and what should we write here so until now what has happened here is that 5 uh, this is just a string inside this uh, double quotes is just a string it will print out as it is so 5 ones are one every time we'll make a pass the value of i is going to be updated in the first pass the value of i is 1 in the second pass the value of i is 2 in the second uh, third pass 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 that is it and that is how you actually you wanted to print your uh, let's say uh, table you have seen your tables in your mathematics books so that is exactly what we are trying to do here okay so i'll write here sum now the value of sum is initially Five, uh, sorry, one. So what I will try to do here is, I will write sum is equal to sum plus five. Okay, and I think that would do the trick. So first, the value of sum is equal to one. Uh, as far as as soon as we entered the loop, the value of sum has been updated to five. That is one plus five. Uh, so what should I do here is I will. do this now it is all right i think yeah so the initial value of sum becomes now 5 the next iteration in the next iteration sum will again uh, 
uh, be updated to plus 5. So initially it was 0, then when we entered the loop it will become 5. After that we have make one pass, it will become 5 plus 5, 10 and 15 and that will go on until the loop commences. Until the iterations of the loop got, uh, let's say, exhausted. Okay, so let's try to save this and try to print this if it works or not. Let's see it. So let me head to the console and uh, yes, there it is. Exactly what we are trying to do. So 5 multiplied by 1 is equal to 5, 5 multiplied by 2 is equal to 10 and 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. So this loop actually goes on for exactly 10 times. So I think you have got the point what I have trying to do here. Okay. Okay. So this is how you implement your for loop. Initialization, condition and updation. It is not mandatory to update this uh, variable i by only one. You can use the step as you want. Let's say if I want to increase the i by two at every step. So I will write i plus two. In that case, your table will not be printed as you have seen in your mathematics book, but it will still work, but in a different way. Let me show you what will happen. here. Okay. So in that case, every time the loop has made a pass, the value of i has actually been updated by two instead of one. So one, three, five, seven, nine. Okay. So this is how you can uh, use your loops. Uh, you can use nested loops. That is a loop inside a loop. There is no limitation of using nested loops. You can use as many nested loops as you want. Okay. So I think you have got the point what we are trying to do here. So I'll end this lecture now and tomorrow we are going to discuss the arrays part. Thank you.